for 10,000 in the midst of the million. Millions. Midst of the million. 10,000 fearless men. Who say death is sweeter than continued life under tyranny. As long as I can remember, really, I mean, I started at the age of four with my uncles and my mother and my great uncles, you know what I mean? My grandfather, all of them, you know, I'm third generation um, nation of Islam. So we've been, in, we've been in drill all my life. I remember at the age of four being, you know, hit on the hand with a switch if I move, you know, and that really just taught us that discipline. So, you know, for a very long time. I mean, it really just gave us that connection to the streets, you know what I mean? Born Homes being one of the um, most dangerous areas in Atlanta, you know what I mean? And I was actually born in that community, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, my uncles were involved in, in the drug culture and Born Homes, so we pretty much ran that area for a time period, you know what I mean? Producing people out, you know, getting connected with people like you, uh, Kilo and Shawty Low, people like that, you know what I mean? From culture so it's basically you know bank here born home that's 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 my foundation being bad is uh something that most great people are labeled um depending you know who you ask Muhammad Ali was bad Mike Tyson was bad Floyd Mayweather is bad um, Ray Lewis is bad Cam Newton's bad Tom Brady's bad whoever if you're great in your thing you know LeBron is the bad guy so it's nothing to be, it's an honor when people say that we're bad. If in scripture, you know, Jesus was considered bad, you know, to the Romans. And uh, and now the most honest Louis Farrakhan is considered bad, you know, to the American government. So for us to be labeled bad is a good thing. Since uh, when I was younger, I went to school, and, um, and when I went to school in a black neighborhood, and my family, my parents had a little bit of money. The, the, the children was hard, you know, and they, for a couple years, they would make jokes like black jokes, she's so black, dark this, dark that. And I was happy, like I was good. And being good didn't necessarily, that got me bullied, that got me, the nicer you were, the more you got picked on, the more I got roasted, this black nigga is this. I was happy. But then all of a sudden, when I started to fight and learned that I could fight and fight back, then they started telling my teeth, they started telling my mom. They never called my moms when I was getting bullied. They never called my dad when I was getting bullied or getting picked on. But when I started to fight back and I started to fight the people in seventh grade and eighth grade and started to whoop up on the wannabe vice lords and GDs or black songs or whatever, then they said, your son is bad. So I always thought that, you know, shit, I'd rather be bad and fight back than be good and get my ass whooped. They reached out for the youth to, to drill, and all young people love to drill. So they reached out for them, and they responded to their call. As a matter of fact, they had the largest mosque meeting in the history of Mosque Number 15 under their leadership. You know, that's why I was so elated to hear Minister Sharif say that one of his main focuses was to put the youth out front because he heard that from the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan, and that's what really, really drew me in to him to really be one of those helpers, you know, and making sure that the youth was that focal point. So before him, uh, there wasn't a culture, you know, I was being maybe a brother or two around that age group was there. You know, everybody else was kind of real young and really want to come out like that because they had nothing for us to do. To Jamal, he had a certain type of flair, a certain type of air, you know, and he was passionate about the young people. and. Myself and Brother Joshua, we were, you know, older, so we were dealing with the older group, but that younger generation, we didn't want to be like those that came before us, you know what I mean, and forget about that, the younger ones that's coming after us. We wanted that somebody that we could trust and put in place that, you know, that would take charge 
of these young people and, and give them the proper care and the proper attention that they need. So Brother Jamal really was the best fit in that ministerial position, you know what I mean? And he, he did a great job. When we came to Atlanta, it was, it was instant excitement for young people. Man, Sharif called us and he said he went into Brotherhood to get a drill team. I linked up with uh, Brother Zacharias and uh, instantly we had our age group, but I knew that my brother had the influence of the military, the young people, and I knew that Jamal had the ministry. So Zach reached out to Jamal. I reached out to my brother. I knew he could organize them. And when I, everything that I did with my group, he did with his group, and it was successful. And instantly young people was uh, galvanizing. So he was over the junior FY, I was over the FY drill team. And that was the beginning of it. Young people get shunned sometimes and pushed to the back because they don't necessarily understand our culture, understand the way we act, and they think we're supposed to act like them. You know what I mean? And we have our own expression. You know what I mean? We believe in the principles of, uh, of, of what we're taught, but we still have our own expression with that teaching. So we was up there, you know, it was a Saturday night in Chicago at Savior's Day. We all had our snapbacks on, man. You know, we was blacked out, red and black, you know, representing where we're from in Atlanta and people making jokes and trying to say that we were like the franchise boys and they calling me Usher and whatnot. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we was um, asked to drill. And so we did our drill and whatnot. And we was drilling the music at that time. That was so unorthodox as well. You know what I mean? And we was drilling and the music cut off, but we weren't finished. So, you know what I mean? I look back at Josh, he like, what we gonna do? <laughs> I looked at him, then I turned back around and we just went right into the drill and without the music and the routine and the whole crowd, was like hundreds of you, just went up like, wow, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, the youth need a champion. The youth need somebody who's gonna fight for them for the right principles and not cow it down trying to be pleasing to the eyes of the powers that be. That's why we're like considered to be the bad boys in the world. Um, I'm not gonna say no year. Um, back in the day, we went to Chicago, the brothers and the sisters, and they were having workshops. And when they were having workshops, they didn't have um, any youth involved in any of the workshops. Pretty much the same way it is now. But through drill, we organize all of the young people to come watch the Atlanta FOI and Atlanta Vanguard drill. So we drill, they invite us to an event to drill uh, some poetry and nobody was in, in, in the poetry workshop. They said, if y'all drill, can y'all drill? I said, yeah, we'll drill. We go get like 50 young people from Chicago, New York, LA, everybody come see the brothers and sisters drill. We got regular clothes on. We bring the young people into the event that they had nobody in there. Then when we bring all the people in, they try to cut our time because now they saw how many people we brought. Now they want to cut the time of us drilling and now they want to do more snap fingers and poetry. We wasn't going for it. When they cut our time, we kept drilling because we said, no, y'all, we brought these people in here. That was the agreement. We kept drilling. Once we kept drilling, they went back and told all the national people, all the national people, Atlanta's being rebellious. We're being bad. Yet you being good didn't get no young people in there. Us being bad got all the young people in there. Maybe it's something that you all need to switch, not the drill team needs to switch. So when they say we bad, it doesn't matter because we speak the language of young people. Young people following us. They're not following that boring. They're not following that boring old leisure. The only people we follow is the most harmless as far. Any any music that was popular at the time, we were drilling to it. You know what I mean? So I really feel like it had a, a, a the best effect possible for drill on the young people that we were trying to reach because we weren't just drilling to drill we were drilling to reach people we were drilling to recruit that's really what it was we were recruiting people we would go into the hood I remember Hollywood Court Bankhead on, but anywhere on Bankhead every hood before they tore down all the hoods gentrification we was in the hoods drilling we was out there drilling to music and people was loving it the hood, the hood was receptive of what we were doing the mosque was receptive too because they would never seen nothing like it before we had to let those know that was already in the seats and those that went before us that Hey, we got a voice too, and this is what we come up with. So that we got next was the theme, and then for the one we had over 800 people come to, it was called the explosion. And the, the whole speech and the whole name that I gave the speech was called fire. And I came out to um, 
because we came out to music too and during that time, you know, when they said, next up to the stage, you know what I mean? So I came down to Lil Wayne, Fireman, and by the grace of Allah, you know, brought that fire. Well, starting off, that was the craziest night of my life, period. And uh, I lost someone that was really close to me in that car that night, someone I grew up with. And the uh, other person I, who had got shot was Rashad. You know, that uh, really took a toll on me. I think that night, I mean, yeah, that night, I cried that whole night. Just to uh, hear my brother call my name, telling me he got shot, telling me, don't leave him. You know, that took a big toll on me. And that's where my uh, disconnection with the family had, uh, had started with Rashad and uh, the Shri family. And most folks don't understand the uh, bond I have with the family. But when that happened, I drew away from the family for about a year or two because I didn't want to see Rashad go through what he was going through. And I didn't want to be a part of that uh, pain. I tried to run from it. And that night, I mean that whole week, I cried the whole week. Locked myself in my room and I just cried the whole week. And then after that, I never cried again. It's like all the emotions were drawn from me. But dealing with the brotherhood, it drew us closer together. No matter where me, Rashad, or Tavon is in the world, that bond can never be broken. Uh, yeah, man. That night, man, was it was a life changing night, man. Um, that night it was crazy, man. I still can't believe it to this day. You know, um, it really changed, you know, just my whole perception on life. Like, man, this thing is real. You know what I'm saying? A lot of landers know it can happen to somebody that close to you. You know what I'm saying? We never would have thought that would have happened, you know, in a million years or so. It made the bond so strong, you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, we all we got is young folks. So, man, it's like, man, you know, it draws us closer as a brotherhood because it's like, man, we still standing. It could have been you, it could have been me. I'm at the door where they shot at. All I hear is ta 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 I'm at, I'm at the door. Mind you, I'm at the door, they shoot. I see the picture. Why I'm not there? You know what I'm saying? So it kind of, it's a blessing. So it's like, man, for y'all to still be here, I need to cling on y'all tight. We need to cling towards each other, each other tighter. Because you are my brother's keeper. I'm your brother's keeper. So, you know what I'm saying? It definitely made the bond. Mm. November 9th, the night I got shot, and we lost Josh. That shit was crazy. It was, um, I mean, the spirit, the spirit, we, we was like all in the moss, but we, everything was kind of on a decline. Cause we was all, everybody was getting attracted to the streets. Everybody wanted to party. Everybody was getting, you know, hormones was raging. Everybody wanted to fuck some, you know what I mean? It was going crazy. But what bonded us is the fact that we seen a nigga die together. You know what I mean? Real shit. We, you know what I mean? We seen a nigga die. Like a lot of people can't say that they seen somebody die right in front of them and, and, and seen another man get shot. You know what I mean? It was traumatizing, bro. And, and the fact that we all share that same engram is, is what bonds us today because we all could have stopped fucking with each other after that, but we, we chose to to look past, you know what I mean, whatever happened that night and say, look, we're going to be a brotherhood and we're going to do it for Josh. You know what I mean? Because with Joshua Richards, not, you know, OG Josh, but Joshua Richards and, uh, you know, the fact, Tyvon was in the streets back then, you know, he came in after that. You know what I mean? It just made everybody kind of, it was a call, it was a shot. Like, damn, nigga, Rashad got shot. Like, who the fuck would have thought Rashad would get shot? You know what I mean? Like, real shit. I didn't even see that shit coming, but it came. So I think it I think it made everybody in the brotherhood slow down a little bit. Think about what the fuck is going on in the streets, but you know, after that, shit got real. You know what I mean? It wasn't no more drill for me. It wasn't no more, you know what I mean, playing around for me. I, I was really dedicated to getting people back in the mission. You know what I mean? But I mean that's pretty much what happened today. Because one of us was in that bed, you know what I mean? It's like for me, that was a reality call, that was a wake-up call. Just how far down the youth had gotten. But at the end of the day, where we needed to go. And I felt somewhat responsible for being the point person, the youth organizer, the youth minister. Um, when it comes to the shooting situation, I let my brother and other brothers talk about it more than me. I haven't got audited enough to really return and go back to it. However, I will say 
that from that point forward, the brotherhood um, got tighter and we fought our fights. We used to fight all the time over basketball and over just petty stuff. But once Rashad got shot and the brother got killed, we haven't fought since then unless it's for something that's life or death. So um, it just it just made us see the importance of why we fight and how precious life and death is. So the shooting incident, it grew us up. It made us it made us see how important um, it say it made us know why we fight. And that's why we take drill so serious because we drill for the women if they are raped and the children and molestation and if you try the minister or you try the believers, that's what we really will fight and kill over it. But ever since my brother got shot, I know how quick something can pop off. So we don't fight over basketball anymore. I don't fight over football. I don't fight over video games or Super Bowl or nothing like that or who's the best five rappers. I don't fight over that. We fight over it life and death situations and my drill team is really with the shits when it comes to fighting we really will fight and get over it all crazy to talk We go to Chicago, and um, we just changed drill forever. That's the bottom line. The Vanguard in the 90s, they ran it. They were exciting. They were fast-paced and fast movement. When we went to 2011, most of the FOI drill teams were stuck back in the 80s and the 90s. We came with a newer style. I feel like I'm the Steve Jobs of drill, where I gave them the iPhone 1 back then. Now it's 2016, we're on the iPhone 6. But 2011, we went. We gave him some advanced drill. We, you know, we won. And after we won, received a lot of uh, hate and anger from the city that, uh, you know, we from. And we, we drilled for the most honorable missile as far kind at his dinner. And when we drilled at his dinner, it was the greatest moment of my life because I got to ask the man who saved my life permission to drill. And I said, honorable missile as far kind permission to you know lead the men in the battle and he said yes sir he was pleased to see me he was pleased to see my brother he was pleased with the routine but everybody at the dinner was cold nobody clapped for me or my brother nobody clapped for the drill team they didn't care that we spent our last money to get to savior's day and it, some of us was homeless and some of us was broke some of us was dropout some of us were dealing with real life they didn't give a damn they treated us as if we wasn't believers because we wasn't from chicago and from that day forward, I felt like LeBron James, when he left Cleveland to go to Miami, like they burnt my jersey. Like, damn, all the work that my mom did, my father did, all the work that we put in didn't mean nothing because we wasn't from Chicago. Now y'all mad. And from that day forward, I started to see like, man, we the bad boys of drill because what? We ain't from Chicago. We won. We represented the man of God. We salute him. We, you know, we soldiers. But they treated us so cold. It was just like the, the Five Heartbeats movie. Whereas almost they told people don't clap for us. They was hot, they was mad because we won. But we wasn't arrogant, we was humble. And, I, and it was the greatest moment of my life to drill for the man of God. And the hell with it. It felt him. immaculate. Because at the end of the day, after all we've been through, all those years, I mean, we had drill competition in our own city. You know what I mean? So to catch slight from every direction and then be vindicated on a national stage at the first annual drill competition as it been so much lapsed, you know, in time in terms of the drill competition, for us to be bringing it back and set that new standard for FOI drill, man, that felt great, you know.